a promotional image from Equeer for Fear. Photo courtesy of Shudder. Draped in a floor-length white gown, sporting a precisely stitched jawline and blowout hairdo with that now famous ripple of white, the Bride of Frankenstein catches her first breath of life, her eyes darting around the laboratory. The monster descends a staircase, hand outstretched. Friend, he beckons. She shrieks in terror, turning away. The subtext. Oh no. I know this man is not for me. The Monster's Bride is one of the most explicit queer-coded characters to exist, says producer-director Brian Fuller, whose four-part docu-series Queer for Fear premiered this month on Shudder. The premise of a woman rejecting what society expected at the time, marriage to a man, is queer even by today's standards. There's something about the Bride of Frankenstein as kind of the ultimate queer woman who chooses her own path and rejects heteronormativity, Fuller tells into. And about that story being told by a queer man asking the question, what if she doesn't like him for reasons that are, you know, her own. Fuller loves the Munsters for a similar reason, feeling connected to characters who don't belong just like gay children don't. He says that James Whale's interpretation and direction of a queer woman make, perhaps the most iconic queer hero monster of cinema. Even though mainstream media has often pigeonholed queer representation as an afterthought in horror over the decades, queer writers, filmmakers, and actors birthed. Mary Shelley, considered the, the mother of horror and writer of the first science fiction novel, Frankenstein, was bisexual, and its film director, James Whale, openly gay. Without Shelley's writing and the queer filmmakers that jump-started Hollywood's love affair with monsters and horror, we wouldn't have the genre as we know it today. So why have there been such queerphobic stereotypes in the genre, despite the fact that the early years of horror were queer as heck, and everyone making them knew it? One interpretation is that horror plays off people's fears, and in 1930, what was more frightening than queerness? It's often positioned, in traditional horror, as being akin to the death of morality and all things holy. This moral panic permeated society in the early 20th century, infiltrating the genre's cinematic evolution despite the presence of LGBTQ creators. We're in an age where gay characters and queer storylines are fighting their way back into the genre. Early horror movies were created by queer filmmakers with queer source material as their inspiration. However, the constraints of society closed in and squashed that inherent and oftentimes explicit queerness after 1934, when the Hayes Code became fully enforced. But now, we're in an age where gay characters and queer storylines are fighting their way back into the genre. This complicated history poses a tricky task for today's filmmakers and fans to continue enjoying scary movies and creating meaningful frights. Yet after decades of queer theorists reading into horror films, filmmakers are finally exploring queerness out in the open, without having to bury it in subtext. The gay history of classic horror The earliest horror movies date back to French filmmaker and illusionist Georges Méliès in the 1890s, but it wasn't until decades later, in 1931, that Universal Studios released Todd Browning's Dracula, followed by Wales Frankenstein that same year. They weren't meant to start a whole franchise of Universal Studios monsters, but with their success, in large part due to American audiences' need for a diversion from the Great Depression, the studio started churning out monster flicks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.